So far, we have learned about rings, which was an abstract algebraic structure that extracts some properties of, for example, integers or polynomials. and many other structures. So we abstracted away the details of these uh, specific sets and extracted, as, in a sense, some essential parts of these structures and define rings. And rings are basically a set, uh, let's say a set, and two binary operators. which are addition and multiplication. And of course, these uh, operations must satisfy a certain sets of axioms. Today, we are going to uh, deal with more abstract, even simpler algebraic structure called groups. So groups are uh, just like it's, it's another abstraction of integers and polynomials and many other uh, specific sets, but it has only one binary operator. Uh, which can be interpreted as addition or multiplication or something else. So it's just a binary operator and only one of them exists. So group is a set with one binary operator uh, satisfying a certain set of axioms. Now let's define groups step by step, but first we define something called semigroups. Here's the definition. Semigroup. Okay, let S be a set which is non-empty and there is one binary operator which we denote by this star or asterisk which satisfy uh, uh, the following axioms. So this is a binary operator so if A and B are elements of S then we write uh, its operation as this a star b so one the first axiom is that for all pairs of elements in s we have a star b belongs to s okay so a star b is another element in s so it's like a mapping star is a mapping uh, from the Cartesian product, product of S uh, by itself to S. Okay, so take any two elements from S and maps another element to it. And second, for all uh, uh, triple of elements, uh, A star B then star C is equal to A star and B star C. So this is our associativity. And the first uh, condition is also, uh, of course, closure. So S is closed under this binary operation and this operation is associative. So, of course, because of this condition, we may write uh, as a just a star b star c without any parenthesis. And please note that we do not impose commutativity. So, in general, a star b may not be equal to b star a. Okay? It may be equal, but it may not be equal. We just don't specify that condition. Let's see an example. Uh, let's say we have the set of integers and consider uh, the addition as the binary operator. 
then uh, under usual uh, operation of this addition uh, this is a s uh, semi group for for example for any integers a and b we have we can define another integer a plus b and of course uh, this addition is commuted uh, associative right so this is just an ordinary addition uh, so these hold so the set of integers is a semi group and of course if we consider the set of integers with ordinary multiplication then this is also a semi group so uh, for any integers a and b a times b is also an integer so it is closed and uh, integer multiplication is associative therefore this is a semi group and another example or it's, it's an even simpler example is consider the set consisting of just one element so this a can be anything it can be a number it can be a symbol it can be anything but we just define uh, a binary operator so a times a but is a so this is a definition if we define the, the binary operation in this way then this set s together with this uh, binary operation is uh, is a semi group as you can see uh, uh, by definition so there's only one element so we can only calculate a times a but by definition it is a which is in s so uh, s is closed under this operation and of course a times a times a is associative because by definition uh, this one is a so this part becomes this a and a times a is a but uh, this is also uh, we can also calculate uh, this in a different order so first we calculate this part and we get it this and this is a so these are equal so associativity also holds therefore this set together with this binary operation is a semi group and another simple example let's say s is any non empty set and we define a binary operator by this a times b is equal to b we, so the result of this binary operation is just the second element okay so by definition this is an element of s as long as a and b are elements of s right so it is uh, operate this operation is closed I mean the set is closed under this operation and the associativity holds so if we multiply a b first and then multiply c then by definition of a b that is b right so this part is this then bc results in c on the other hand a times bc uh, by definition of bc we have a times c right so this part becomes this then by definition of uh, this we take the second element that is c so they are equal so the associativity holds and yet another simple example again let s be any non-empty set and let little s be a particular element of s okay so this is it can be any element a particular any particular element okay then for any elements a b we define a times b to be equal to s so this s is this s okay 
So that means the result of this binary operation is just a constant. So it gives always the same value, same element. Okay, then this is again a semi-group, and you should try to prove that. So you should, uh, you know, a closure condition is obvious because uh, any uh, couple of uh, elements gives the same element by binary operation, so uh, which is an element of S, so it's closed. And what about associativity? I think it should be obvious because uh, S times S is also S, right? Uh, but uh, you should check. Now, let's prove some uh, non-trivial result. So uh, let's make as a lemma. Okay, uh, let S be a semi-group. So implicitly, we have some binary operation defined. Okay, S is semi-group, and let uh, E and F be elements of S such that such that uh, EX is equal to X and XF is equal to X for all X for all X in S. Okay, so uh, E and F are some specific elements of S, and multiplying E from the left doesn't change the element, and multiplying F from the right doesn't change the element. Then, uh, we have E equal to F. So, therefore, EX is equal to X, E is equal to X for all x in s. So let's prove this. Actually proof is not so hard. And so since uh, we have uh, ex is equal to x for all x, let, uh, let x equal to f. x be equal to f, then we have uh, then we have E, F is equal to F, right? And also, since X, F is equal to X for all X, then let X be E. Then we have uh, E, F equals to uh, E. So E, F is equal to both, equal to both F and E, right? Therefore, E is equal to F, and the rest, uh, the rest is uh, uh, this one. So the rest is obvious now, and we are done. And based on this lemma, we define the notion of monoid. Uh, let's define monoid, which is a little bit slightly compli more complicated algebraic structure than semi-groups. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, a semi-group S is called a monoid. Monoid if there exists an element such, such that uh, e, uh, EX is equal to XE, uh, maybe I should write, such that for all X in S, uh, EX is equal to XE is equal to X. Okay, Then such an element E is called Uh, the identity element. Or simply identity of S. Okay. And as you can see from the previous lemma, if there is such an element E, if there is an identity element, 
that element should be unique. So there are no two distinct identity elements in a in a monoid. Okay, so monoid is basically a semi-group with an identity element, and that's it. Now let's look into uh, the associative law in more detail. Let's say we have a semi-group S and its elements A, B, C, D. Then there are many ways to multiply them. Uh, for example, A, B first, then C, D, and then multiply them. Or we can uh, multiply A after multiplying uh, B, C uh, times D. Or we can uh, multiply like uh, A and B and C, D. So multiply C, D first, then multiply B from the left, then multiply A from the left, and so on. But uh, since S is a semi-group, uh, we can apply the associativity, right? So if we do that, we can see that all of these are the same element. So these are actually equal. So without ambiguity, we can just ignore the parentheses and write all of these as just A, B, C, D. without you know without any confusion because they all give the same result consequently we can define uh, the notion of uh, powers okay so let's say a is an element of s then we can define a to the power of 1 as a and a to the power of 2 as a times a and a to the power of 3 as a times a times a and so on and a to the power of n as a times a times and so on so if we multiply the same element a n times it's uh, it's defined to be a to the power of n okay and you should show that uh, for m and n in natural numbers, that is from 1, 2, 3, and so on, we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n is equal to uh, a to the power of m plus n. Okay, you should try to show this. Okay, and if S is a monoid. Is a monoid uh, with identity element E. Okay. Then we can define a to the power of zero as E. So for any element a, so this can be any element. If we uh, take the power to the z uh, power of zero, then it's defined to be e. Now, if we uh, accept this convention, then uh, we have this equality for int uh, for all non-negative integers. So that means including m and n equal to zero, we have this equality. Now let's see a few more examples. Let's say x is a non-empty set and s of x is a set, the set of, uh, of all mappings from x to x. Okay, then this is this can be shown to be a, a semi-group with function composition. Okay, so let's see, f and g are elements of s of x. So that means f and g are uh, mappings from x to x. Right. So we define uh, a binary operation between f and g as the function composition. 
So it's defined as f of g of x. Okay, and of course x is an element of and the set x. And so this is the definition of uh, of uh, uh, of binary operation. So as you can see, f after g is also a mapping from x to x. Therefore, uh, this is closed. Uh, so s of uh, <coughs> s of each f after g is an element of s of x. So this set is closed under this binary operation. And also if f, g, h are elements of this set, then we have f after g after h is equal to f after g after h. So this holds. So it is this uh, binary operation of uh, function composition is, is associative. Therefore, uh, this set S of X together with function composition is a semigroup. Actually, it is a monoid because there is this identity element. Uh, let's call it iota. So iota. It's a Greek letter. It's like I without dot. Okay. It's a Greek letter iota. So let's use this symbol to define the identity mapping. So for all x in x, uh, iota of x is equal to x. So of course this is an element of x. So this is an identity mapping. And of course, this iota is an element of S of x, because it's a mapping from x to x. And this serves as the identity element of this semi-group, uh, as you can easily check. So the, the definition of identity element is this. In, in the present context, it should be iota of uh, after f is equal to f, which is equal to f after iota, uh, iota. So let's check this. So is this true? Uh, to check this, just apply this to any element. So by the definition of function composition, this is this, right? But uh, by the definition of uh, this iota, and then this is simply equal to f of x. So this part is done. And also f after iota of x is by definition of function composition. This is this. But iota applied to x is just x. So that is f of x. Therefore we have proved this part. So this iota is indeed the identity element of S of X. Therefore, it's actually a, it's a monoid. And yet another example, uh, consider the set of integers and we define a, some, a little bit exotic operation. Star by, we define this by this. A star B is equal to A plus b plus a times b. So this plus and this uh, multiplication is the usual addition and multiplication of integers. So we define this binary operator star. Then of course this is an integer. So this set, the set of integers is closed under this uh, binary operation. What about uh, associativity? So let's check that. Uh, a star B star C. So by the definition, we've calculated this part first. 
that is a plus b plus a b star c now uh, by this definition that is a plus b plus a b plus c plus a plus b plus a b times c now uh, let's expand everything and a plus b plus uh, a b plus c plus uh, a c b c and a b c okay let's see uh, a plus b plus c and a b a c b c plus a b c okay so okay going from here to uh, backwards is a little bit tedious so let's try to calculate this a star b star c instead so we first calculate this part so that is a star and b plus c plus uh, b c then that is a plus b plus c plus b c ti plus a times b plus c plus b c and that is a plus b plus c plus b c plus a b plus a c plus a b c so uh, by changing the order we can see that this is indeed equal to this therefore we have uh, a star b star c equals to a star b star c therefore this binary operation is associative and so this set a set of integers with this binary operation is at least a semi-group so is there any identity element for this consider zero so zero star a what is this according to the definition zero plus a plus zero times a which is equal to a oh this looks good and a star zero is uh, a plus zero plus a times zero which is equal to a so therefore zero is the identity element so therefore uh, the set of integers with this particular binary operator is a monoid now let's prove some something interesting uh, let's put it as a lemma let s be a monoid with uh, identity element e and let a be some element of s and let for this element a and let a prime and a double prime uh, which are elements of s such that such that uh, a prime a is equal to e which is is also equal to uh, a times a double prime okay uh, so we say a prime is the left inverse inverse of a because if we multiply a prime to a from the left then it is equal to the identity element and similarly a double prime is called uh, the right inverse of a because if we multiply a double prime 
to A from the right, then we get the identity element. Now, if this is the case, then we have uh, uh, A prime is equal to A double prime. Okay. The proof is very easy. So we have a double prime. Since E is an uh, is the identity element, it is equal to E times A double prime. But uh, by the given condition, E is equal to either this or this, and so we use this one. Uh, a prime times A and A double prime and by using the associativity we have A prime times A times A double prime but uh, this is equal to E but uh, E is the identity element so it is equal to A prime so after all we have A double prime is equal to a prime and we are done. Uh, one thing to note about this, uh, this lemma is that this A uh, is just some element okay so we are not saying that uh, this holds for any element of S so there may be some elements of S such that there are no uh, corresponding left or right inverses of that element Okay, but we are saying if there are for some element of S, A, if there are such elements as A prime or A double prime behaving like this, then they must be same. They must be the same. That's what this says. Next, we prove the following theorem. Uh, first, let S be a semigroup. So that means this is a set with a binary operation uh, and this set is closed under that binary operation and that operation is associative. And assume, suppose the following two conditions hold. First, uh, there exists some element in S such that for all elements of S, A, uh, we have E A uh, equals to A. Okay, we are not saying uh, A E is equal to A. We are just saying E A is equal to A. Okay. So this is not a condition for the identity element, right? Okay. And second, for each element of S, there exists some element, corresponding er element, A prime in S, such that A prime is equal to, uh, A prime times A is equal to E. So this means for every element of S, we have uh, the corresponding left inverse of that element. Okay, we are not uh, assuming the right inverse, but only left inverse. Then, S is actually a monoid uh, with identity element with E, so this E, as uh, the identity element. And uh, A prime A is equal to A a prime is equal to E. Okay, so if these two conditions are met, this E is actually the identity element, and this A prime is also the right inverse, not only just just a, just a left inverse. Okay, let's prove this theorem. First, we prove that this E is indeed the identity element. Uh, let's prove. So in order to prove that E is an 
is the identity element, we need to prove that EA is equal to AE for all uh, A. Okay, uh, so EA is equal to A by, uh, by assumption, so AE is also equal to A, if we can prove this. So, uh, let's see how we can do this. Uh, let A be an arbitrary element of S, and by the second condition, there exists some element A prime in S such that uh, A prime A is equal to E. Okay, and then for this A prime, there exists some element, let's call it A double prime, such that A double prime times A prime is equal to E. You know, again by assumption. Uh, condition 2. Right? It says for any element. So A prime is an element of S, so there should be another element, we call it A double prime, such that this holds. Okay, uh, then, uh, let's see, AE, so we want to show that AE is equal to EA. Uh, so AE is equal to AE. Wait a minute. AE is equal to. So A is equal to. So let's consider this A. So this A is equal to uh, EA. So EA times E. And uh, by associativity, this is equal to AE times AE. And now uh, this E is equal to this using uh, this uh, equality. We have uh, A double prime, A prime times AE. Okay. And let's see, <clears throat> using the associativity we have, now consider this part, a double prime, a prime, a times e, but uh, by using this equality, this is equal to uh, e. But uh, E times E is equal to E. So A double prime E. Now, uh, let's see. Um, this E. We eliminate this E by using uh, this one again. So that is A double prime, A prime A. And using associativity, that is equal to a double prime, a prime times a. But a double prime times a prime is e, so that is e a. So we have a e is equal to e a, and that's what we wanted to prove. Therefore, e is the identity. element of S. Okay, then uh, we have uh, A prime A is equal to E, uh, which is equal to uh, A double prime A prime. So we use this and this. Okay, and now that we know this E is the identity element, we can use the previous lemma. So if you look at this and this, uh, which shows uh, A is the right inverse of A prime. 
and a double prime is the left inverse. of a prime, right? So by the previous lemma, uh, by the above lemma, we have just proved, uh, we have a is equal to a double prime. So therefore, we have uh, a prime a is equal to a times a prime which is equal to e. So that's what we wanted to prove and we are done. Uh, one thing to note about this theorem is that in these conditions uh, e and a prime act from the left okay both from the left okay and we can have a very similar theorem if we assume that e and a prime both acts from both act from the right but uh, we do not have the same result if one of them acts from the left and the other acts from the right okay in that case this theorem doesn't hold so be careful here is an example or rather a counter example uh, let's see, uh, S is a set of two elements, let's call it E and F. And we define the multiplication in this uh, binary operation in this set as E E is equal to E and E F is equal to F and F F is equal to F and F E is equal to E. So this defines the binary operation within this set. And you should see that this is indeed a semi-group. Now, uh, this E acts from the left and it behaves like the identity element as long as we just look at an operation from the left. Okay? But it is not and because if we multiply e from the right to f then we get e instead of f so this violates the definition of the identity element so e is not identity okay and if you look at uh, this equation uh, the right inverse of E of E is, is E itself and the right inverse of uh, F is E. I mean if we pretend that E is the identity element but since E is not identity element these terms uh, doesn't make sense really but uh, so in this case uh, so uh, if we consider this equation and this equation we might, might write this as E and E prime is equal to E and F and F prime is equal to E and E prime happens to be E itself and F prime is, is E. And so in this case the, the pseudo identity element acts from the left so this satisfies the condition uh, the first condition of the theorem this one and and uh, and this first equation and this last last equation apparently satisfy the second condition but instead of the left uh, inverses we, we just consider the right inverse okay so if uh, these uh, two conditions are uh, you know 
act, acting from the left and acting from the right, they, if they are mixed, then the claim of the theorem doesn't hold because e, in this case, this E is not the identity element.